Okay, part two. Next thing we want to do is add a sampling device. So we right click on a blank area underneath the redrum and create a NNXT advanced sampler. There's an NN19 there that was in the original reason, but you'll probably never want to use it because the NNXT can do everything it can do. It can load up the NN19 samples and it's a lot better. Now, first things first, make sure you've got high quality interpolation on makes it sound a lot nicer and uh, you'll notice these little triangles here if you click on that that will expand the editor view you also notice there's a little triangle at the top of the unit as well this will actually minimize it to just a little bar and you can minimize just about every single device there let's put that back though now if you go to open a file from up here you can load up a NNXT or NN19 patch which has got samples prepared and edited in whatever way but if you want to start from scratch you have to open up this window here and inside here you have the option to load up a sample which can be a WAV file or AIF file you know so um, we'll try this out and we'll go load sample and uh, let's find something a bit different. What's Total Chill Out got? Okay, they're a bit too mellow. <laughs> Let's check out something else. Maybe not. Okay, that'll do. So I'll double click on that, and you can see by default it's assigned at the whole key range. But say you don't want to do that, you want to uh, split it up into different key zones and so forth, you can grab the end of it here or here and drag up the key zone to just the specific range that you want. And doing what I've done there just limits it to the C3 note only and uh, therefore on the keyboard it'll only trigger on that note. Now what you can do once you've done that is you can right click underneath that area and go add zone. Now when you add a zone you can see this is selected now. You just left click the select the zone and you can see this zone's been assigned the whole key range again. So if we just drag this select it to the next one like that. Also important if you're going to have it play at the original key adjust your root note here and you can see when I've done that the grayed out key is now C sharp which is the root key for this note well the root key is C but since I want it to play on C sharp as C I have to change the root to C sharp okay now we can load a, sa load a sample up again except that I've selected both zones there, which isn't right. Just that one. Okay, now we can load the sample up. So go soft pad three. So now we've got soft pad two on C and soft pad three on C sharp. If we go down to the view down here, pull this up a bit, and go into edit mode. Let's pull it back to the beginning of the pattern. C three. sharp and everything else is blank so we grab the pencil drag it in drag in another one okay now we'll hit play pretty 
pretty average sounding, I know. But, with a bit of time and effort, you can really make some pretty amazing things with your NN19 sampler. Now, each sample can have all these parameters assigned to it individually. So, for instance, uh, oh, I've hit undo there and I've lost some inklets, so redo it. that. Yeah, redo it. There we go, it's back again. So, if I'm selecting pad 3, and uh, I could do something crazy like uh, put a ex extreme LFO pitch wobble on it. And then if I click on soft pad 2, you notice it hasn't changed, it's still got its default. So each one of these can be set individually to each sample in each key zone here. Uh, you can just you know, imagine the power that gives you the do. So, um, if we go down to our edit view again and just check out what the sound of the two different notes are again we've got the normal plain sounding one and then the one we've edited that's fucking whacked out <laughs> so very powerful I really recommend playing around with your LFOs on this you can get some really cool effects in fact play with all of it and the best way to figure out what it does is just to listen to it, alter all the values. Things to remember with when using the envelopes is that you may not hear a difference in any one of the sounds until you alter and have a corresponding knob. For instance, you may not hear any difference in the sound of the hold or decay depending on the value that your attack is set at. So try setting your attack at different values and then try seeing how the different delay, sustain, everything else responds according to that. And the same goes with the release as well. So they all will vary what they do depending on the value of the other ones in the envelope. That's for the envelopes anyway. LFO is pretty straightforward. You set your rate up here. You can select a different mode, free run, which will just let it go and cycle according to the rate there, which is 6 hertz. Or you can go group rate, which is... Uh, sets at the same rate as everything else in this sample group. See, this two bits here makes it a group, I guess. I don't really use that much, so I could be wrong about that. Um, but what I do use a bit is the tempo sync option. Because when you put it on tempo sync and go up here, you'll notice the pop-up says LFO rate one quarter. One quarter note, and you can slide it down around to one eighths and all these other different timings there, which will be synced up perfectly to the tempo of your track. Okay, so let's bring this back up again and draw in those notes again. This time we're going to make some whacked out shit. We're going to make the first one all wobbly as hell as well. Going to make it spacey. around just as you would in any other Windows thing. Very handy. Okay, let's go back out to the arrangement. As you can see, all of these are ungrouped by default, as I was saying before. So, uh, to group them, so if I click here, no group icon. 
I click right on that little bar of the note, near enough, there's my group. Now at the moment that yeah, sounds okay, but um, one thing that stands out straight away is that the drums seem to be really soft compared to the sample. So we go back up to the mixer and yeah, start adjusting our levels there. Maybe turn this down, maybe put on an EQ. That sounds a bit better. Now when you push your levels around you might want to be aware of the audio app clipping down here. It's okay for it to clip so long as it sounds alright. As always use your ears, but if it's going red all the time, you might yeah, there it goes there. You might find that um it might be wise to just pull down your levels of everything or even your master levels a bit. Now okay, we've gotten this far and you say, ah oh, well that's cool, I wanna add some effects. The best way to do this is to right click somewhere on the mixer and go go create come down here and uh, let's say we'll go for a phaser to begin with now the reason why you right click on the mixer is that when if you right clicked and created a device below the other tracks it would connect that effect unit directly to that device but since I clicked on the mixer it's going to connect it directly to the mixer and you can see this when you hit tab and have a look at the connections at the back there you can see that this has been hooked up actually it's staying corrected it hasn't been hooked up it usually should be by default you can hook it up manually as I said that was tab to get to the back it up manually, it's just a matter of dragging and dropping. Now, up here behind here, there are the effects around here somewhere. And I can't seem to find them. Ah, no, it's the sense. Here we go. Now, my belief it goes from out. Hang on, let's do that again. Delete this device. And we'll go create again. It should have done it with the defaults. Let's try Unison instead. What it should do is assign it automatically to one of your auxiliaries which then you should be able to just add it there and hear the effects going through and of course if you have it all sharp here which it isn't uh, something else is going on it's trying to make me look stupid and it's doing a good job okay so from send out we go and put it 